Hello everyone, the Senpai Goat here. So for today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play music when you enter a collider and how to actually trigger a event. So we have a area here when the player enters from this path here, it will trigger a different song to play and this little gate will actually close down, trapping the player with this boss. Now, when you defeat the boss, it will also play a victory song as well as open this gate here so that the player can continue on. And then from there, you can have whatever, a portal going to the next level or to continue on the path or another trigger to trigger, trigger the level music to play again. So first thing that we're gonna do is just uh, make sure that you followed the Unity 3D tutorial stop level music and play death music when player dies and that will actually teach you how to set up the sound effect script and what all goes into the sound effect script because we will be actually calling on that for this lesson. It will also teach you how to set up an audio object, game object, since we will be actually copying and pasting those so that we don't have to uh, keep creating them. Once you've seen that tutorial, you'll know how to actually set up the level music here and have your audio clip. If you wanted level music, if you don't want level music, then don't worry about that part. And you'll also have your music player, which will actually have the sound effects. So you'll have to put your sound effects here, which will be the boss victory and the enter boss song. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and copy and paste the level music and just rename it. So up here, we'll just name it Enter Boss Zone. Then we'll just drag and drop our audio clip. So we have our audio clip here. We'll just drag and drop it into the audio clip and I'm gonna make sure that it's not play on the wake. I'm also gonna copy and paste to make another one which will be the boss victory. And I'll drag and drop 8-bit one in. And I'll put the link for both of these down in the description since they're both royalty free. I just downloaded them off of YouTube there. And again, making sure that they are not play on awake or looped. So next, what we're going to have to do is have an animation for the gate. Uh, I'm not going to really go over that uh, since everyone's going to have different animations. Basically, this gate's just going to come down. It starts at 15 and I set it to 5 and I did a quick little animation for it. And then instead of an animator, I just have an animation because I will be calling upon the animation itself. And then you just drag and drop the animation to so the closing gate right here. I turn play automatically off because I do not want it to actually be playing. And then for the opening one, it's the exact same thing. It's just reversed. It's the gate open. And basically it starts at five and then I just put the 15. I put it at one second or two second. And this one I made a bit faster because I want the gate to close before the player can turn around and run out. So I put this one at about one second. For the boss, all I'm doing is I'm using that enemy turtle. So Again, I've did these tutorials in the past for these action adventure series, so hopefully you've been following those. So for the boss, we have the top and the bottom. The bottom is what's going to be damaging uh, the player in the top. Normally, uh, I'd have like a big troll or, you know, whatever you want for the boss, and you'd have the animations, you'd have the different hit colliders. But I've changed these scripts from the uh, previous way that we've done it in the tutorial series, which I'll be going over here in a second. So again, if you remember the enemy turtle, you have the top, which if you uh, jump on it, it will actually hurt. So the boss actually has a health script attached to him now. And his current health is 100. And then the uh, damage that will be done to the enemy is this damage enemy script, which will actually hurt the boss 25. So the boss does have 100 health. So when you jump on him four times, he will be dead. And the is dead bull will be checked through. And we'll get to that in a second. And of course, I just, for the bottom here, I've actually made another script called Damage Player, which will hurt the player 50. So you can always adjust these on different enemies to equal if they're going to die in one hit, two hits, four hits, so on and so forth. So let's get into a couple of these scripts. So let's go over the sound effects script first, since we've done this in the past. It's uh, pretty simple. We're just going to create uh, two new public audio sources, and we're going to call the first one Boss Victory. And the second one, enter boss song. And then we're gonna create two more bools down here. I'm gonna make them public for now. I'm gonna call it boss victory equals false and enter boss song equals false. Now these do have capitals where these ones do not. So just uh, remember that. So going down further, we're gonna create two new public voids. We're gonna call this one, basically we're just gonna copy the death song that we've done in the past. We're going to paste it two more times and we're just going to change it. So the enter boss battle 
is what I called this one, and then I called this one Boss Defeated. So if level music is playing, so if the level music is playing when we enter that trigger, level song equals false, level music dot stop. So we're gonna stop the level music. And then if not entered boss song is playing and enter boss song equals false, then we're gonna play the boss song and we're going to enter boss song to equal true. So it is now playing. And then once the boss is defeated, we wanna actually stop this boss battle music. We wanna play a victory music. So we're gonna go public void boss defeated. If entered boss song is playing, entered boss song equals false and stop that boss song. And then if uh, the boss victory song is not playing and the boss victory equals false, then we're gonna play that boss victory song and it will equal true. And that's all that we're gonna be doing with the sound effects. So in the sound effect, which is the music player here, we're just gonna drag and drop the enter boss song where it's supposed to go and the victory also where it's supposed to go here. And that's all that we need to do with this game object. So let's go over what we're gonna to have to do for this trigger. So when the player enters the trigger, the gate closes. So it's gonna play that animation and it's gonna start the next music. So first we're actually gonna to need to create a empty game object, which I've already went ahead and did. Then we're gonna turn the mesh renderer off. So this little mesh renderer here, just make sure that it is off. And then for the box collider, just make sure that it is a trigger. So when the player actually enters it, it will actually do something. And then we're gonna create a C sharp script and we're gonna call it enter and boss zone. And we're gonna actually attach it onto the trigger. So what is in the enter boss zone? So we're gonna have a public game object gate. And that's what this is gonna be right here. So we're gonna drag and drop this game object. We're just gonna drag and drop this into the gate slot here. And it will know to grab the animation from this cube here, which has this closing gate animation. So private void on trigger enter collider other is what we're gonna be creating. So if other dot game object dot tag equals player. So our player does have a tag which uh, names him as the player. So whenever the player enters this trigger, we're going to do something. So we're going to do a few different things. First, we're going to find the object of type sound effects. So it's going to find this sound effects script, and then it's going to find a function in that script. So it's going to find enter boss battle. So if we go back to the sound effects, and if we scroll down, it will be finding this function here. So it's gonna find this and it's gonna know, okay, stop the level music and play the enter boss battle music. The second thing it's gonna do is it's gonna go and grab the gate dot get component animation play and then closing gate. So the gate, which is right here, the game object and it's gonna get component the animation and it's gonna play closing gate. So if we go down to cube 30, I believe it is, it's gonna find the animation here, and it's gonna find the clip, and it's gonna play it once. So that's the second thing it's gonna do. Now third, we don't want the player to keep running through the trigger here, so we're actually gonna just destroy it. And that's all there is to get this animation to actually play through this trigger, and to play the uh, uh, audio clip. So second, we're gonna have to create a boss or an object that we're gonna have to destroy, so I'm not really gonna to go too far into creating this as we have already done a turtle, but everyone's gonna have a different thing. You're gonna have your own different boss. Maybe you're gonna have different animations, a different health script. So I'm really quickly just gonna go over how to actually create the dead function and a little bit going into the uh, animation here. So public game object gate. So same as the trigger for the boss, we're gonna have a gate object as well attached to him here. So here's the gate and that's this one here. So this is the second gate. When he's dead, we're gonna actually lift this gate up and play a different music. So this is where we're gonna attach this game object here. So we're just gonna drag and drop that one into the slot. Second, we're gonna actually make his max health 100. So we have a public int max health, public int current health, public bool is dead, which we're gonna start off equal and false. And we have a void start. Current health equals max health, and then we're gonna have a public void damage boss, int hurt vector three direction, and then the current health 
minus equals hurt. If current health is equal to or less than zero, is dead equals true, and then we're gonna call the dead function, which is right here. And now this is where we're actually going to tell it to change the music and to actually do the animation for the gate. So this is what you're gonna be putting into your game right here. So whenever he dies, so if uh, is dead equals true, the bool that we have, then we're gonna do a few different things. We're gonna find the object of type, damage enemy. We're gonna find the function defeat boss. So damage enemy here and defeated boss is here. So defeated boss will equal for each transform child in transform child dot game object dot set active false destroy transform parent game object in two seconds. So it'll play the animation and then it will disappear. Now it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing like an MMO or whatever, you may want him to actually sink through. So you'd play a different animation and have him sink through the ground. I'm not going to get into that. So we're going to have a second thing. We're going to have the find object of type sound effect uh, boss defeated. So it's going to go and find that sound effect that we had attached onto our music player. And it's going to play the boss defeated right here. So the enter boss song will stop and the victory song will play. And that's how you change the music through the boss. And then we're going to have a third thing. We're going to have the gate dot get component animation dot play gate open. So it's going to find the object that we have attached here, this right here, which is here. It's going to find the animation, which is right here, the gate open, and then it's going to play it once. So the gate will then open. So I did create two other scripts here uh, just so that we can test this out in game. I wanted to create a quick hurt script and a quick damage player script. So I created this damage player script which uh, we can adjust through the uh, enemy here and that will give us the hurt. So how much is it going to hurt? And I want to actually take two hits to kill the player. So I just upped it through the bottom here. So I just put it at 50. So the player's health is 100. So when he gets hit twice, of course, he's going to die. We have a, a private void on trigger enter collider other. If other dot game object dot tag equals player vector three damage direction equals other dot transform position minus the transform uh, position damage direction equals damage direction dot normalize. So the reason I have this is whenever the player takes damage, I want him to get knocked back. Now I've done a knockback script in the past. You can actually, if you've been following the tutorial series for the action adventure series, then you'll know how to do this. Uh, if not, just uh, feel free to go back and take a look at that. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna find the object of type, the player health, uh, damage player hurt, damage direction. So it's going to go ahead and look at that script, what we have. Basically, it's going to take down the player's health and it's going to knock him back. Then we have the damage enemy, which is the new script that I created here for the enemies. Basically, it's the same thing where we have the public int hurt equals 25 for the boss because I want the boss to actually take 25 damage. Now, there's a couple things. Whenever we hit an enemy, I always want the player to bounce off. So we're going to have that also included in here, which is the advanced movement. So we have a private void on trigger enter collider other if other dot game object dot tag equals player vector three damage direction equals other dot transform position minus the transform position damage direction equals damage direction dot normalize and then we go into the bounce off of the enemy command which is find object of type advanced movement and we have that in our advanced movement script and then we're going to be calling the bounce off command. See, so yeah, like I said, you can go back, look at those tutorials that we've done for this action adventure series, and that will actually tell you how to actually do that. Then we have a find object of type enemy boss dot damage boss hurt and then damage direction. So it's going to find the enemy boss and then the damage boss, which is right here. And then it's going to go through. It's going to be like, okay, he took 25 damage minus that from his current health. If his, if his current health is zero, then he's dead and then it's gonna go through the dead function. Then we have a public void defeated boss, which we've went over with the enemy boss here, which is defeated boss right up here. So this is what that's gonna be called, which it's gonna destroy the uh, transform parent. So because we have the top here that they're gonna be hitting, it's actually gonna be destroying the parent, which in return will destroy both of the child children of the parent. Since we have two different triggers, we have one for damage and we have one for how much he's gonna be getting hurt. And that's all there is really to this. So this is something I threw together really quick. So I'm gonna hop in the game. The music might be a 
bit loud so just bear with it for a little bit and we'll go over the animations as well as the killing the boss and switching the music and this is what you'll be getting in the game here all right so here we are in game the music is going to start for the level music so like i said it might be a bit loud so i'm just going to actually let me scroll out let me turn around so you guys can actually see it so we're going to hit this trigger the gate closes and the and then, uh, new music starts so we're in the boss battle so I'm gonna hit this, I'm gonna bounce off. We have to hit it now four times since it is 25 damage per hit and the boss is held is 100. So boom, the music switches, the gate opens, and we can continue on our way. After that you may want to switch the level so you have another trigger here or a portal or something or you can have it continue on and have another trigger that switches it back to the level music again. Uh, which, whatever you want, you know, it's it's your game, it's, it's your imagination. As long as you have imagination for it, then it's infinite to what you're able to do with game design development. This right here took me like not even half an hour to set up and create. So that's how easy it is to actually switch the level music through a boss once he dies and to play animations through the boss or through a trigger. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, leave a like, comment down below. If you have any trouble, uh, feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.